are guides, we are kings We march in faith cause we believe we can Change the world to what it needs Stand against our enemies cause we can Yeah Kings demanding change cause we believe we can Sisters, how y'all doing the Sabbath day? Brothers, how y'all doing? All oh, praises. All right. Now, I don't remember if I gave the title of last week's class. It was The Nation. No. It was The Nation, The Pains of Education. The Nation, The Pains of Education. That was last week's class. Last week's class. So y'all just jot that down real quick. The Nation, The Pains of Education. This week, I don't got a title. We're just going to go through James 4. We'll go through, we'll, we'll go through the whole chapter. We'll make it through the whole chapter. James 4 breakdown. We're going to start in James chapter 3, verse 16. The book of James, chapter 3, verse 16. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. Read it again. For where envy and strife is. So it says where envy and strife is. There is confusion. There's confusion and what? And every evil work. And every evil work follows confusion amongst the body, amongst the nation. Y'all see that on Facebook. Y'all been seeing it for the last couple of months. Envy, strife, confusion. And you know what all the other evil works that follow behind that? Heresies, false doctrines. Read it again. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. Read on. But the wisdom that is from above. But is the wisdom that's from the Lord. Is first pure. Uh -huh. Then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated. Full of mercy and good fruits without partiality. And without hypocrisy. And without hypocrisy. James 3 and 16. James 3 and 16. So it says, read verse 17 again. Verse 17. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality, and without hypocrisy. So you want to overcome envy, strife in your spirit, confusion amongst the body? You got to have a spirit of purity, a spirit of peace, gentleness amongst each other. It says, and easy to be entreated. Who knows what that means? What does that mean, easy to be entreated? Brother Killian. That, uh, Shalom. Shalom. That, that wisdom is not withheld. That wisdom is easy to find. Easy to find. If you're looking for it. If you're looking for Okay. If you're looking for it. So, somebody else? Easy to find if you're looking for it. Shalom, Rudy Shoot. Shalom. Uh, easy to be entreated me. you easy to, uh, to be approached. It's easy for people to come talk to you. Things of that nature. Why? Because uh, you get along with everybody. You're a peaceful man. When somebody talks to you, you're not always trying to blast them. Or something like that. You're easy to talk to. Right. Because you gentle because you have a spirit of wisdom. So yeah, it's easy to come if, if I got an issue with you, it's easy to come to you. Because you're easy to be entreated. Shalom. Shalom. Most sign Christ bless. Sometimes it is. 
Sometimes, sometimes. Read, pull up and treat. It said, read verse 17 again while they're getting that pulled up. James chapter 3, verse 17. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. So if you're dealing in the spirit of wisdom, which is applying the commandments, the confusion, the evil amongst each other, the strife, all the other evil works that follow behind that, you don't got to worry about none of that. Why? Because you're working in a spirit of peace, gentleness, pureness. You're easy, it's easy to come to you if we got an issue. It ain't got to go through 15 different people. Now it's mass confusion. Now don't nobody know what's going on. And everybody got a problem. That's, that, Brother, that is so, that's, that's frustrating, man. It's, it's very frustrating. The scriptures are very plain. If I got an issue with you, I'm going to go to you. I'm not going to go to the other 10 people to get to you. If I got an issue with you, I'm going to go to you. I'm not going to go to the other 10 people to get to you. It, and 10 other people got 10 different stories about what happened. And then, then hey, leadership, I need, you to, I, I need you to fix my mess. Listen, you go fix your mess. You decided to go amongst 10 other people, so you go fix that. All right? I don't know if y'all knew, but we don't read minds. We don't read minds. Read on. Verse 18. And the fruit of righteousness. This is by far one of my favorite scriptures when it comes to conflict in the body. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Who can explain that? This is by far one of my favorite scriptures when it comes to issues, conflict. Soldier, uh, Officer Lobby. Shalom, leadership. Uh, basically, it's saying um, the scripture where it says, uh, blessed are the peacemakers. So uh, it says, and the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. So the ones that's making peace, that's what righteous is. Absolutely. Find me this, Matthew's 5. Hold, hold this. Matthew's 5. Some people live for strife and contention and everything else. Some people live for that. They eat it up, man. You can't go to sleep without an argument. Can't wake up without an argument. Can't go through a day without a, some fight or contention or whatever. Uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse 9. The book of Matthew chapter 5, verse 9. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Why will they be called the children of God? Because they're applying the commandments. A peacemaker, the only peace you're going to have is through what? Through the scriptures. The only peace amongst each other is through what? Through the scriptures. Psalms 119, while I'm thinking about it. The book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 165. Great peace have they which love thy law. Great peace have they which love thy law. Go back to James, uh, James 3. The book of James, chapter 3, verse 18. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make of, peace. Of them which love the law and will apply the commandments in, in whatever situation of envy, strife, confusion, and every other evil work. Great peace have all those that love the law. Now, James, remember, James, 1 Peter, 2 Peter, Romans, so on and so forth. These are all letters. These are, this, is, this is one long scroll. That's what we, so that's why I started in chapter 3 and verse 16, because chapter 4 and verse 1 is just a continuation of the thought. So verse 18, he said, the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Above that, verse 16, he said, where does confusion come from? It comes from envy. It comes from strife. It comes from every other evil work. Chapter 4, verse 1. The book of James, chapter 4, verse 1. From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence, even of your lust, that war in your members? Okay, so what, when it says, from whence come wars and fightings among you, he's talking about but amongst yourself, it within yourself, marital issues and wars and fightings, congregational wars and fightings. Where does it come from? 
uh, Soldier Kiefer. Shalom. Uh, Shalom. It comes from, the, from in your mind the envy and strife that you already have inside of you. Envy, strife, confusion, and all the other evil works that follow it. That's where the wars and fightings come from amongst us. All of a sudden, nobody wants to be a peacemaker. Everybody want to make a point. Everybody want to be right. For what? Okay, you right. Then what? Then what? Okay, cool. You right. We got a we got an issue. We got an argument. You right. Now what? You've been working. You've been working for the last two or three weeks to be right to make a point. All right, you made your point. Now what? Within that three weeks, there's been confusion, arguments, fightings, wars, phone calls, text messages, and everything else. When we could have made peace a week ago. All right, you made your point. Now what? What's the point? What's the point? As we read through chapter 4, verse 1, I'm a, uh, not, not verse 1, but as we read on through chapter 4, I'm going to show y'all why it's a lot of the stuff that we go through is so insignificant in the grand scheme of things. It's so, it's, yeah, but officer, you, just did, you just did not hear the way he said it. He just, uh, yeah. but he asked me to pick the chair up, but I was, I was talking. I was in the middle of a conversation. I think I need to Matthew 18. Yeah, but officer, you don't understand the way she said it, though. I, I just, but then the way she looked at me because she didn't shalom me when I walked out, I just, I just don't know. I just, I'm just i confused. It passed right by you? Just passed right by me. Didn't even say nothing. I think she hates me. Oh, that's not the spirit. Right? Yeah. That's not the spirit. Right? But that's what we hear. Conf it, it's, it's, as we read on through chapter four, y'all will get it. It, it. It'd be so insignificant. The phone calls, I'm like, why you call me with this? You couldn't have figured that out? You, you called me with yeah, all right. All right. Chapter 4, verse 1. The book of James, <sighs> chapter 4, verse 1. Hey, I still love Israel. I still love him, but Lord have mercy. Come on. From whence come wars and fightings among you? Where do the problems arise amongst Israel? Come they not hence, even of your own, even of your lust, that war in your members? For some people's lust, it's contention and strife. That's their lust. That's what they get off by. That's, that's their high. Some people are very docile, very non, you know, just non-contentious. I don't want no problems. I'm a peacemaker. I just want peace. But you can't be shamefaced in every situation. Some situations, yo, we gotta, we gotta figure this out. I can't be bashful and shamefaced about this. We gotta, I gotta get a clue. You gotta get a clue. Somebody gotta get a clue. Read on. Uh, hold that. Colossians chapter three, verse five. I'm gonna show y'all some of the members. Additional members. The book of Colossians, chapter 3, verse 5. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. So in Colossus, amongst all the other churches, a lot of the spirits that they was dealing with and a lot of the evil that Paul was having to correct was sexual sins. That ain't nothing new for us. That ain't nothing new for Dallas. That ain't nothing new for Texas. It ain't nothing new for OKC. It ain't nothing new for Israel in general. Sexual sins. So if it ain't a sexual sin that somebody's dealing with, it's strife. If it ain't strife, it's, it's uh, envy. If it ain't envy, it's confusion. If it ain't confusion, it's whatever other evil work that you can... That you can um, Pull out of your mind and out of your spirit. What'd you say? Covetousness. See it on the mic? Covetousness. You know, it's been, uh, it's been a lot of things. A lot of times, you know, brothers might um, covet a position. You know, maybe covering a position. Oh, I want that position. Oh, I, no, I think I can do that position better than that brother. You know, when this brother just came in, <laughs> he's just a mm -hmm. brother. You know, he doesn't know how things work. You know, he doesn't know how to, how um, the rule setting is. You know, from that position on down. You know, a lot of brothers are just um, in that mind frame. They're just power hungry. Really, they're just power hungry. They just want to be seen. They just want to be noticed. You know, and not knowing that with these scriptures, you can destroy yourself, your, con your congregation, your whole family. You know, uh, Hebrews four, Hebrews four and twelve, Hebrews four and twelve, right quick. Hebrews four and twelve. All right. We have to keep this thing in mind. All right. 
especially brothers that um, want that position to things so badly. The book of Hebrews, chapter 4, and verse 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful. Stop. The word of God is quick and powerful. It's powerful. I'm talking about the word that you hold in your hand right now is powerful. What makes the word, what makes it so powerful? Need some hands. So what makes the word of God so powerful? So. Or just give me an example. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to say uh, it's, this is the only book where you can look at it and it'll tell you about yourself and what you need to fix. Everything. Right. Morally. So right. uh, if you're dealing with the, for, for instance, example, covetous spirit, it'll identify how you, how, what that covetous spirit will do, what it is, and how you can fix it, you know. Exactly. Yep. That too. Or you can, um, a brother could, you can give some brother some scriptures, and now he's got tr he's got um, he trusts you, you know, but you're just using him, you know, for a certain for a certain um, let's see for a certain situation, you know, or just to get at this brother's um, what he has, you know, or his get at his family or get at his wife or get at his daughter or something like that, just to be nice to him, just using the word for that reason. It's many pastors that do that, you know. It's many brothers and sisters that covet, you know, the things that another man or woman has, you know, just to destroy their life, just to get what they have, you know. This thing is powerful, and in the end, you destroy yourself, too, just because of covetousness. Go back to James 3. 3 verse 1 again. The book of James, chapter 4, verse 1. From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence, even of your lust, that war in your members? That war in your members, that war in your mind and your spirit. Go ahead. Ye lust and have not. Ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, yet ye have not. Like the officer was going into, ye lust and have not. You covet after things that don't belong to you, like the, like the officer was bringing out. Brothers, it'd be position. Well, I want to be officer such and such. I want to be soldier such and such. I want to be captain such and such or whatever. And then, I, and I know we've seen many a times where brothers will lose respect because of the covetousness and the envy within you, because of a lust that's within you. And then all of a sudden, you go from worrying about doing the work to now you worrying about everything that that officer's doing or not doing, everything that that soldier's doing or not doing. So now the work is, doing the work of the Lord is out the window. You ain't worried about that. You worried about officers such and such, soldiers such and such. Ye lust and have not. You covet after a position that the Most High ain't put you in. Yet, if it be the Lord's will, you'll be there. Read on. Ye fight and war. No, re uh, read it from the top. It said ye lust. Ye lust and have not. Ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, yet ye have not, because ye ask not. Because ye ask not. Uh, for that kill, 1 John chapter 3, verse 18. Of, uh, 15, 15, 15. First John chapter 3, verse 15. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. Whosoever kills... And you desire to have a position, and you will not obtain that position. Read that again. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. Because remember, envy turns into every other evil work. Envy don't just stop at envy. Envy leads to hatred. Hatred leads to murder. Hatred is murder. So it don't just stop there. And I'm talking brothers and sisters. I ain't talking about just positions. Whatever it is that you lusting after, whatever it is that you coveting after, whatever it is that you envying, that envy, that lust, that hatred, that that, uh, that covetousness leads to hatred. Inevitably, if you don't purge that out of your spirit. It says, ye lust and have not, ye kill. And desire to have, and cannot obtain. And cannot obtain. The most I'm not going to give you a position, and you filled with hatred. 
Ye filled with envy. Come on. Ye fight and war, yet ye have not, because ye ask not. Because ye ask not. Hold that. Matthew 21 and 22. Matthew chapter 21, verse 22. The book of Matthew, chapter 21, verse 22. And all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. Believing ye shall receive. What are we specifically talking about here in James 4? Because I ain't talking about no new job. You know, yeah, new job, but I'm talking about on the spiritual side. You can, you know, the carnal side, the worldly things. You know, that's fine, but I'm talking more so spiritually. What should we be praying for and believing that the Most High will give us? Uh, so did Jonathan. Peace in one mind. Peace in one mind, that's good. You got a scripture? Uh, First Corinthians 1 and 10. Uh, what does it say? First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you. That's good. That's good. That's good. Something else? Uh, for us to have... Give me your name. What's your name? Xavier. Brother Xavier. Uh, peace and rulership over the nations. Peace and rulerships and uh, rulership over the other nations. That's right. You got a scripture? No. All right. That sounded good, though. That sounded good. Who got a scripture? Okay, what you got? Um, this one in uh, the book of Deuteronomy uh, 7, Excuse 4. Me. It says that uh, if you keep the commandments, you'll be above all nations. Okay, that's good. That's good. That's good. Uh, we read. We well, soldier Josias gave us gave us a scripture earlier, so I'm trying to get y'all to connect the dots with what we read in James three, where it talks about. Also. Shalom. We pray for wisdom. Wisdom. There you go. We pray for wisdom. That sounds good. You got a scripture? <laughs> so, uh, Officer uh, Zeph. James 1 and 5. There you go. James chapter 1, verse 5. Because you ain't going to get to overcome envy, strife, and all that other stuff with a new job, with a new car. That's good. You know, if you need it, that's cool. There's no problem with that. But above everything, James chapter 1, verse 5. The book of James, chapter 1, verse 5. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally. Or freely. And up That's e easy to be entreated. Go ahead. And upbraideth it, upbraideth it not, and it shall be given him. And it shall be given him if we ask in faith. You ain't going to be able to overcome nothing. You ain't got to worry about no new car and all that other stuff. All that stuff... Moth and rust doth corrupt. You, one fire, that new car is gone. One house fire, the, new, the, the house you just prayed for, that's done. The new job, boss have a bad day, you done. That's nothing. Wisdom is what we should be praying for first and foremost. Now, follow-up question. How do you know you're going to receive what you ask for, what you pray for, in terms of wisdom? Brother Bell, I know you got it. Shalom. Shalom. By keeping the commandments of the Most High God. All uh, praises. Sound good. Yes, sir. You got a scripture? I, I was. <laughs> okay, you oh, get 50%. 50%. <laughs> right here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Malkaja. Shalom. Shalom. 1 uh, John 3 and 22. There you go. 1 John chapter 3, verse 22. That's it. Book of 1 John, chapter 3, verse 22. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him, because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Your, your consistent application of the commandments, your consistency in receiving counsel when there are issues that may be above your strength or you don't know how to deal with. 
But if it's certain things that are within your strength to deal with, the fighting and the wars and things like that, the Most High gave you scriptures to be able to overcome. The fact that you don't apply is where the problem comes in. Go back to James. The book of James, chapter 4, and verse 3. Ye ask and receive not, because ye ask amiss, that ye may consume it upon your lust. It says ye ask amiss. Sirach, chapter 20, verse 21. It's another, it's another thing about praying for worldly things, whatever the case is. Again, you know, job, car, whatever the case is, that's good. But there's a reason why there's only so much of a ceiling that many of us will go to in the world in terms of monetarily, uh, um, physical things, houses, whatever the case is. Sirach chapter 20, verse 21. Sirach chapter 20, verse 21. There is that is hindered from sinning through want. Through want. Somebody explain that. Read it again, and then somebody explain it. There is that is hindered from sinning through okay. want. It's, you got to read it a certain way. It says, there is that is hindered from sinning through want. Somebody explain that. Uh, Brother Tobias. So uh, it's saying that you get uh, hindered from certain things in the world because uh, if you if you get it, you might sin after you get it. Right. Yeah. So give me an example. Like you don't you don't have uh, the certain income you want in the world, but if you were to get it, it could like draw you out of the truth. You could like use it for things of the world and it'll take you away. Yeah, absolutely. How many brothers be like, yo, if I win the lottery, I'm going to give Israel, you know, if I win 50 million, I'm going to give Israel 40. Yeah, no, you're not. <laughs> you, 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 you won't do that. You won't. You, you pull up in a Bugatti, you pull up in a, what, what's, what's another nice car? Uh, Rolls Royce, you roll up in a Benz or something like that. Sisters will have a gold-plated dress on, whatever the case is. Yeah, listen, you, you win 50 million, you, we might not see you again. I don't know. I don't know. I pray that's not the case, but read, read that again. So rock chapter 20, verse 21. Yeah, man. All of a sudden, I can't even see up here because the, the, the earrings from the sisters is pure diamonds. I'm like, where you get that from? You went straight to see everything. Oh, man. All right. Read that. There is that is hindered from sinning through want. So the Lord said, I know what I'm doing. All right. This is not a contradiction to the class last week on skills. Because I said last week, I was very specific, that those, the skills and the, the courses and the education, those things that you learn are to bring back to Israel to build the nation up. It's another thing if you're saying, okay, I'm going to go and I'm going to get this immaculate education so that I can put myself in a, in a, in a mansion or so I can look, go live in Frisco or, or, or Plano somewhere, whatever the case is. And then we see you once a month. It's different. Go, uh, go back. So that's why it says, so read that again, James 4 in, in uh, verse 3. James chapter 4, verse 3. Ye ask and receive not, because ye ask amiss. Because you're asking inappropriately. The Most High knows what you need. The Most High knows your threshold. He knows this dude get, if this dude get another $2,000, he might roll up in a Bentley or something. You know? Read, uh, find me that in Psalms about um, David. Don't make, uh, give, or maybe Proverbs. Prover, pro, Solomon, excuse me. Uh, poverty nor riches. Come on. Proverbs chapter 30, verse 8. Remove far from me vanity and lies. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient for me. Is that read it again? Remove far from me vanity and lies. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient for me. Feed me with food convenient for me. Read on. Lest I be full and deny thee and say, who is the Lord? Lest I be full, lest my bank account have a million dollars in it. And then I'm like, yo, the, 
Uh, the commandments? What is that? Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Go ahead. Or lest I be poor. Or lest I be poor. Or lest I have, I, I I'm, don't have enough. I'm and, running in red month after month. And steal. And take the name of my God in vain. And take the name of my God in vain. All right. So the Most High gives us sufficient for what we need in this life. The Lord said, when you read uh, uh, Matthew's uh, 26, Christ said the poor would always be amongst us. So there's always going to be the haves and the have-nots amongst Israel. There was always the upper class, middle class, lower class. So it's the same thing today. But play your part. Go back to James. James chapter 4, verse 3. Ye ask and receive not, because ye ask amiss. Because you ask wrongfully, because you ask him for more than what the Lord knows you can handle. Come on. That ye may consume it upon your lust. That you may consume it upon your lust. All of a sudden, you, you, you and I'm, I'm telling you because it's happened. All of a sudden, you, drop, you start dropping ones in a strip club somewhere or something like that. Because you ask amiss. So ask the Lord for things that are convenient and necessary for you to be able to live and maintain in this captivity. It's not to say that you can't attain to, to new levels, because, of course, the scripture says money answereth all things. Go ahead. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is oh, okay. enmity Hold with... On, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Reverse four again. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, Know ye not ye, ye adulterers and adulteresses. Know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Okay, so why does the Lord say, why does the Lord call us adulterers and adulteresses? Why is he calling us that? Uh, shalom. Because uh, we'll fornicate spiritually. We'll go off from the commandments. Absolutely. You got a scripture? Not right now, no. Who got a scripture? Brothers Wright. Officer Zeph. Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 2. There you go. Read that. The book of Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 2. Lift up thine eyes unto the high places, and see where thou hast not been lying with. In the ways hast thou sat for them, as the Arabians, the Arabian in the wilderness. And thou hast polluted the land with thy whoredoms and with thy wickedness. Uh, explain it. We're going to jump down, because I want to get to the part, point about adulterers and adulteresses, but explain verse 2. Uh, okay, so... If you uh, read verse 1. Verse 1. They say, if a man put away his wife, and she go from him and become another man's, shall he return unto her again? Shall not that land be greatly polluted? So uh, Jeremiah is taking the example from uh, Moses in Deuteronomy 24th chapter, when he was uh, saying that we was, putting our, we was putting our wives away for every cause, and uh, if the man put away his wife and she became another man's wife, uh, he, th the first husband couldn't go back to her. So God was saying spiritually, we was going off in the fornication. And he should put us away forever, but uh, he, he going to allow us to come back through Christ, even though we went in a spiritual fornication. Read. But thou hast played the harlot with many lovers. So we, we went to different doctrines. We was jumping around for... Uh, by all, all these idols. We were worshiping the uh, idols of the nations, right? Yet return again to me, saith the Lord. Read. Lift up thine eyes unto the high places and see where thou hast not been lying with. So he said, look up at all the high places that the uh, nations got uh, worshiping their idols and see which ones you ain't uh, laid with, right? In the ways hast thou sat for them as the Arabian in the wilderness. So we were sitting for the... We were sitting for the uh, for the Arabians, for uh, Ishmael in the wilderness, uh, worshiping uh, Allah. 
And thou hast polluted the land with thy whoredoms and with thy wickedness. And we polluted the land of Jerusalem with our spiritual fornication. With our spiritual fornication. Hold that. Uh, Wisdom of Solomon, because we're going to come back to Jeremiah. Wisdom of Solomon 14 and 12, I think. Let's see. Let's get a little bit more understanding on spiritual on a fornication. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 14, verse... 12. 12. Start at verse 11. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 11. Therefore, even upon the idols of the Gentiles, even upon the idols of the other nations, shall there be a visitation, shall the Most High destroy them, because in the, crea- cre- because in the creature of God they are become an abomination. The, the creature is talking about us, right? When you read 2 uh, second, second Corinthians uh, uh 11, I believe. Read. And stumbling blocks to the souls of men. And it became stumbling blocks to us. And a snare to the feet of the unwise. And traps to the feet of the unwise. So, for example, for us today, how is Christianity a snare or a trap for us? My brother right here in the middle. Shalom, leadership. Shalom. Because it thinks that everybody can be saved. Right. Because they think everybody can be saved. Give me something else. Um, uh, now nah, you got one. You good. Pass it to Brother Moriel to your left. Shalom, leadership. Shalom. So basically, Christianity teaches that we don't have to keep God's laws, and they know that we're the main ones that need to be keeping God's laws. So they're teaching us to stay at the bottom, basically. Absolutely. To stay at the bottom, stay baby mamas, stay baby daddies. Why? Because Jesus loved everybody. The law is done away with. What do you need to get married for? Church is full of single mothers. The Christian church that say they love God, love Jesus. Full of single mothers. Full of baby daddies. Go back to, uh, did you read on? Uh, Verse 12. Verse 12. For the devising of idols was the beginning of spiritual fornication, and the invention of them, the corruption of life. And the invention of them, the corruption of the Israelite life. So our entire nation is corrupted by the idols that we follow. White Jesus, Allah, all that. Those are the two main. Go back to Jeremiah 3. Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 2. Lift up Jump, the- jump down to verse 8. Verse 8, and I saw when for all the causes whereby backsliding Israel committed adultery, I had put her away and given her a bill of divorce. Yet her treacherous sister Judah feared not, but went and played the harlot also. So both kingdoms, northern and southern kingdom, went off into idolatry. We both started serving other, serving the idols of the other nations. Jump down to verse 14. Verse 14, turn, O backsliding children, saith the Lord, for I am married unto you, and I will take you, one of a city, and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion. And I will bring you to Zion. So go back to James. So the reason why the Most High called us adulterers and adulteresses is because we so easily follow the doctrines and the idols of the other nations. So easily. We easily swayed. By the, the hell, even the, the the doctrines that you hear going on today. Sab, uh, what is uh, uh, sun, uh, sunrise. The sunrise doctrine, uh, baptism, all this stuff. Israel is so easily swayed. All the scriptures that you've been learning for the last one, two, three, four, five years, the hundreds and thousands of videos online, but we'll still go off into other doctrines. So easily swayed. So we're a nation of adulterers and adulteresses. James 4 and 4. James chapter 4, verse 4. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, you know ye not that the friendship of the world is image with God? Whosoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. So it says, uh, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? First and foremost, friendship with the, the evil spirits. Friendship with uh, covetousness, idolatry, friendship with evil, friendship with murmuring, friendship with 
all the other works of the flesh that you read in Galatians 5. Number two, the friend SH that many, of, that, that many brothers and sisters that y'all have seen run out of the doors over friends. Well, that's my buddy. That's my pal. We came up together. I can't leave him. I can't leave her. That makes you an enemy of God. Read that again. The friendship of the world is enmity with God. Whosoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Somebody say something. Let me, let me find this real quick in uh, Chronicles. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. So the bottom part of it is what I want to focus on. Says, so whosoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Uh, that goes off into s several different areas. Uh, when you think about our daily walk, there's, there's think about your daily walk. You know, when you deal with uh, work or friends or any other people outside of the truth, it says when you a friendship, when you are a uh, friend of the world, you are enemy with God. Um, being friend, the best example I can come up with is. Uh, Occupations. Let's just use occupations. Um, that's one of the major areas that some of us get taken off to when you think about being a friendship with the world. Um, you think about people who become doctors, lawyers, um, high-ranking, you know, officials, whatever, being government or whatever. When you get caught up in those things, you become a friend. That, that brings you into friendship with the world. And it causes you to, it can cause you to go off from your relationships in the truth. Um, because if you delve into those things daily to where you start to uh, shy away from the scriptures, it causes you to be a friend with the world. It brings you into friendship with the world. And it takes you away, it can take you away from the, from the scriptures if you're not applying the scriptures on a daily basis. Uh, and I use that occupation because... Um, is something that I can identify with. Um, you can start to get so caught up in the getting positions, worldly positions, so to speak. And they seeking after worldly positions in, the, in your occupation or whatever, and you start striving, striving. All you, you put all your effort into some worldly position, and that can make you a friend, bring you in a friendship with the world. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Has anybody dealt with that thing before? Or is dealing with that? Hello? Anybody? Somebody raise your hand. That's, that's, bring, that's bringing, being in a friendship with the world. Uh, relationship. Take ungodly relationships. Ungodly relationships, uh, no, it don't have to be in the, in the workforce or whatever. Ungodly relationships can bring you into friendship with the world. Give me Matthew 10. Matthew 10, verse 37. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Somebody explain that. Give me some, somebody explain that real quick. Quickly. Somebody raise your hand quickly so the officer can get his class back. Uh, shalom, leadership. Uh, basically, they're saying uh, if you love your father, mother, daughter, son more than you love the most high, then uh, you're not worthy of uh, salvation not worthy their salvation for Christ because if your mother or father, son, or daughter keep you away from the truth or keep you from keeping the law, then you're not worthy to be called a child. That's exactly right. And that, that goes right back into what also being fr friendship with the world. It goes, it ties right back into that because it doesn't mean to literally hate your father, mother, or your sister. That's not what the literal meaning of it is. It, that, that's not what it's saying. It's saying if you put those things before the most high, if you put those things before the most high, then you're not worthy of getting the kingdom. 
that's a difficult thing for us to do. Some of us to do in this truth is you got to deny those things for the sake of this kingdom. Go ahead, Alice. Get Second Chronicles chapter twenty, verse thirty-one. I'll give y'all an example example of being a friendship with the world and enmity with God. Second Chronicles chapter twenty, verse thirty-one. Second Chronicles chapter twenty, verse thirty-one. And Jehoshaphat reigned over Judah. So we're talking about King Jehoshaphat. Go ahead. He was 30 and 5 years old when he began to reign. And he be Third, meaning 35 years old. And he reigned 20 and 5 years in Jerusalem. He reigned 25 years. And his mother's name was Asuba, the daughter of Shilhai. And he walked in the way of Asa, his father, and departed not from it, doing that which was right in the sight of the Lord. Howbeit the high places were not taken away. So even though he was doing right in the sight of the Lord, he still didn't take down the idols. That's what the high places are. Go ahead. Howbeit the high places were not taken away. For as yet the people had not prepared their, their hearts unto the God of their father. Uh -huh. Now the rest of the acts of Jehoshaphat, first and last, behold, they are written in the book of Jehu, the son of Haniah. Hanani, who is mentioned in the book of the kings of Israel. Hanani, who is mentioned in the book of the kings of Israel. So because he, he himself was doing right in the sight of the Lord, he didn't prepare the people. The people, the rest of Israel wasn't prepared. The rest of Israel was still going off into idolatry, worshiping other gods. So it says, um, verse 35. Verse 35. And after this did Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, joined himself with Ahat, Ahat, Ahaziah. Ahaz, Ahaziah, Ahaziah, king of Israel, who did very wickedly. So Ahaziah was the son of King Ahab, was the son of Ahab. It says, um, king of Judah joined himself with Ahaziah, king of Israel, who did very wickedly. So Jehoshaphat made friendship with the world, a friendship with the wicked. Go ahead. And joined himself with... And, and he? And he joined himself with him to make ships to go to Tarshish. So they went and they went into business together. They struck hands and went into business together. Go ahead. And they made the ships in Ezion Geber. Then... Ezion Geber. Ez Ezion Geber, then Eleazar, the son of Dodava, and Marisha, prophesied against Jehoshaphat, saying, Because thou hast joined thyself with Ahaza, Ahaziah, Ahaziah, the Lord hath broken thy works. So because you decided to make friendship with the world, your business and your works and whatever, you, whatever pr prosperity you're trying to make, it's going to come to naught. It's going to come to nothing. Go ahead. And the ships were broken, that they were not able to go to Tarshish. And you're seeing this today. You're seeing this play out on Facebook today. Brothers is going into business together, doing all this stuff. You join hands with the wicked, and now all of a sudden, nothing that you do prospers. Nothing at all. You see, you literally seeing that play out today. Re Let's go back. James four. So that was just an example of friend, having friendship of the world and enmity with God and what the Most High will do to you and judge you for. Ver, read verse 5. Verse 5. James chapter 4, verse 5. Do you think that the Scripture saith in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? It said the spirit that dwells in us lusts to envy. It lusts for the strife and the confusion and everything else. It lusts to envy. Go ahead. But he giveth more grace. Wherefore, he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Uh, verse 5. Go to Ecclesiastes. Mm, go to Galatians 5 first. Go to Galatians 5 first. So, you can, so we can see what's in our spirit. From birth, Galatians 5 and 16. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. Then I say then, walk in the spirit. If you walk in the spirit, like we've been reading about, walk in wisdom. 
And ye applying the law, applying the commandments. Go ahead. And ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Then you won't run headlong with envy. You won't run headlong with strife. You won't run headlong with confusion and every other evil work that, that comes along with it like we read in Gal uh, James 3. Go back. Now go to Ecclesiastes 2 to touch back on the friendship with the world. The spirit that dwells in us lusts to envy. Solomon dealt with the same thing. Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 2 and verse 1. I said in mine heart, go to now. I will prove thee with mirth. Therefore, enjoy pleasure. And behold, this also is vanity. So what was Solomon saying? He said, I'm going to go live it up. I'm going to go party it out. I'm going to go turn up. That's what they say, right? Get lit. I'm going to go get lit. All right? Read on. I said of laughter, it is mad. And of mirth, what doeth it? He said, "What?" He said, "I said of laughter, it is mad, and of mirth, what doeth it?" Go ahead. I sought in my heart to give myself unto wine, yet acquainting my heart with wisdom, and to lay hold on folly, till I might see what was that good for the sons of men, which they should do under the heaven all the days of their life. Okay, so who can explain that? Soldiers of Mar. And the reason I called on you is because you were a part of the class I did a couple of, mm, sometime last year, where we went over the first three chapters. So I know you in the spirit right now. So give us a sense. Can I get that one more time? I sought in mine heart to, do, to give myself unto wine, yet acquainting mine heart with wisdom, and to lay hold on folly, till I might see what was that good for the sons of men which they should do under the heaven all the days of their life. Okay, so I'm going to set it up for you. You got it? Uh, yeah, you do. I'm going to set it up for you. Okay. Remember, we're talking about the spirit that dwells in us lust to envy. Right. Solomon said, yo, I'm going to go live it up. He said, uh, I sought in mine heart to give myself unto wine, yet acquaint myself, acquaint my heart with wisdom and a lay hold on folly till I see what was that good for the sons of men. So, what was Solomon dealing with? Uh, One word. Whoredom. No. Yeah, but no, not here specifically. Whoa. I'm looking for another word. I already said it. We just read the scripture. Spirit that dwells in us lusts to what? Y'all over there pushing buttons or something. You ain't paying Oh, God. I'm over here. He over pressing buttons. Down. Okay, give me somebody else. Brother Killian. No, no, no. You already answered. Give me Soldier Elior. Your... What it's saying is that when you're dealing with the world, you don't want to be envying what the world has. There you go. There you go. You envying what the wicked is doing. The spirit that dwells in us lusts to envy. That's why certain things y'all can't y'all can't take it for certain people. You know you can't take in your spirit because then all of a sudden you'll start questioning and pondering. Well, what if I did that? Well, what if I went there? But look, they look like they're having fun. I remember when and you start rem reminiscing about Christmas two years ago, three years ago, when you enjoyed with your family, you enjoyed the ham or whatever. Certain things you can't, certain conversations you can't entertain. Dealing with your family, dealing with old acquaintances and old friends in the world or whatever the case is, there's certain stuff you can't entertain. Because you'll all of a sudden start going back. And then you start looking back like that. I remember, yeah, we used to have fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> James 3. James, I'm sorry, 4. James chapter 4, verse 5. Do you think that the scripture saith in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? The spirit that, so just file that in the back of your mind. The spirit that dwells in you lusts to envy. So the next time you, you talking to mama, you talking to big mama, you talking to daddy, or, uh, uncle Nick, Nick, or whoever, and y'all are talking about all the stuff y'all used to do in the world, remember, oh shoot, the spirit that dwells in me lusts to envy. I, don't, I can't be 
thinking about what the wicked is doing and how they used to do it and how they doing it now, whatever the case is, your spirit can't handle that. Even if you think you can, I'm telling you, you can. The scriptures is telling you you can. I ain't, my word mean nothing. Hey, uh, Re- can I pull the scripture real quick? Of, of, on course, same thought? of course. Uh, yeah, course. Give me Sirach 27 and go to verse 12. Uh, just to the same point the officer is saying. When you're around certain people, you have to be aware of not only the conversations, but how long you're actually around these brothers or his sisters. Uh, go ahead. Sirach chapter 27 and verse 12. If thou be among the indiscreet. Indiscreet. I'm, Who's the indiscreet? Verse said the wicked. All right. So those who don't have the laws of God, brothers and sisters who are still dealing with, uh, openly dealing with whoremongering, smoking weed, uh, all those th- uh, celebrating Christmas like Alpha just brought out, celebrating those things that you're actually trying to get away from. If you're amongst those people, which it could be at your job, some of us still talk to our moms, our, uh, some of our family members. You have to observe the time sometimes. Uh, go ahead. Read it from the top. If thou be among the indiscreet, observe the time. What does it mean, observe the time? Y'all, be, y'all can be quick with it. Observe the time. One person. Right here. Shalom, sir. Shalom. How long you, how long you are talking to them? How long you speaking with them? Exactly. So if you're at your mom's house and you come visit your mom, you stop by. I do the same thing. I stop by. Check on my mom. I stay there 15 minutes, 10 minutes or so. Soon as stuff start get out of hand, they start talking about Christmas, or they talking about doing some crazy stuff, I'm out. That's it. Done. I'm not about to sit there and be in the midst of y'all having a conversation. So that's just an example, observing the time. Or right, read on. But be continually among men of understanding. Men who keep God's commandments. That's who ma- majority of your conversations should be with those men. Men who uh, keep the commandments of God. Yeah, re- read verse 11. Verse Sirach chapter twenty seven verse eleven, the discourse of an of an ungodly man is no no excuse me the discourse of a godly man is always with wisdom. So our conversations amongst each other should always be with wisdom, talking about the scriptures, talking about what we need to change, what we need to fix, whatever the case is. Read. But a fool changeth. As the moon. But guess what? Those that are without, those that are not applying God's commandments, they can't, yeah, yeah, it, the, the conversation could very well start off in the scriptures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, son, yeah, what was you talking about with the, you know, with the, with this, uh, you know, keeping the commandments stuff? Uh, then all of a sudden, 15 minutes in, and they talking about the, the big button or whatever and what they did at the club. And I'm, wasn't we just talking about Deuteronomy 28? Then all of, I could have swore I was just trying to teach you how to. How did we get here? And then all of a sudden, your conversation starts to switch. Why? Because the conversations of the foolish, their conversation changes like the moon. Just like the moon has phases, uh, 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 full moon, quarter moon, so on and so forth. That's the same thing with the conversation of the ungodly. It'll go from righteous to ratchet real quick. If you're comfortable talking about the club and what you was doing 10 years ago in the club, it's something wrong with you. It's something wrong with your spirit. If you comfortable, thank you. If you comfortable having conversations about, yeah, remember at Thanksgiving dinner two years ago when we used to do such and such and such? Yeah, those was good times, mama. Yeah, those was good times, ain't he? And that conversation ain't irksome, uh, irksome to you or annoying. Something is wrong with you. You need to examine your spirit. Because God said, read it again. The discourse of irksome. Read, read it again. The discourse of fools is irksome. The discourse, the conversation of fools should be annoying to you. Go ahead. And their sport is in the wantingness of sin. And their talk and their conversation, it's all about sin. It's all sin. They ain't ain't talking about what we're getting ready to do on the Sabbath day. They ain't talking about what we're going to do at camp. They're not talking about, yeah, we need to get the school together. Yeah, we need to build the nation up. That ain't the talk. So So what are you talking about?
it's so hard to serve God And why when I say that I'm a Jew with sound art For years I've been walking around saying that I'm a black man I ain't saying that no more, it's sound man This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.